And I say to someone, whoever is the sponsor of an attack for you, 24 hours from now, they will harvest arrows. If you are saying amen, say it better, amen. Anyone behind whatever you are going through, six hours from now, whatever they have put upon you, God of Ayedepo, let the enemy carry the evil load. I'm going to use this picture here as a point of contact. You are going to pray. Whoever is behind whatever I am going through. Whoever is behind what this young boy is going through. Vengeance of God. Let this arrow leave this body deposit upon the sender. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Whoever is behind what George Ojeka is going through. Oh God of Oyedeko that answered prayer. I pray by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I pray by the fire of vengeance. Let this arrow lift this body now. Go back upon the sender. Lian de Kotana. Jekle Pebre Ilata. Rujagadaga Yagareto. Ilade de Rede Kotolobosata. Berua Lian Ketanedish. Ilo Bere Ketelega de Relekata. Ilo Dodori Katola Pale Kikata. You have always answered me. Show up again, my father. You have always answered me. Show up again, God, that answer a prayer. God of Oyedeko, whoever is behind what George Ojeka is going through, oh, fire of the Lord, uproot by fire and let it stamp upon the sender, uproot by fire. And let it stamp upon the sender of brutes by fire. And let it stamp upon the sender of brutes by fire. And let it stamp upon the sender. you are going through I prophesy on this altar against them let vengeance catch up speedily on them whatever they have fired as an arrow against you let it go and deposit upon their own body if you are saying amen say better amen any man or woman that have made you their target within these seven days I decree let them be caught up with vengeance the evil they have prepared for you let it catch up with them say amen like a believer as God is ransoming this young boy and making him free anyone under the spell 
spell of witchcraft. I decree your freedom in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Any agent of the devil sponsoring the information they are using to attack you. God of Oyerebo, kill them within these seven days. Kill them within these seven days. If you are saying the message, better amen. amen. By Sunday, we will hear the testimony. Amen. If you are saying the message, better amen. amen. I say again, by Sunday, we will hear the testimony. Amen. If you are saying the message, better amen. amen. Put your hands together for the Lord and take your seat. In our teaching series for the midweek, even in this, the remaining days of the prayer and fasting, our focus is on receiving the miracle of instant healing. How many of us are actually fasting these seven days? God bless you. Those of you not fasting, you are starting tomorrow morning. Hallelujah. It's not late. It's not late. Are you hearing me now? It's not late. You can catch up in Jesus' name. The only thing is that uh, you are going to do midnight and join your own. Since you refuse to join us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hear me. Let me say it again. Fasting makes life better. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are too many things God has prepared for us in life and destiny that we must connect with through fasting. So don't see it as pressure. Before you lick orange, you must squeeze it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You may be going through a squeezing now, but blessing must flow for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I remember the first time I did six to six. It's like the earth wants to collapse. The first time. The first time. And I went three days. Now, I didn't know that God was actually preparing me when I was going for youth service that all NCCF schools, they fast three days dry. Only water. Two cup. They measure your water. <laughs> so if I had not survived six to six, how will I dare three days? My God. It will have been suicidal. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So, you better start early because the journey is still far. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The journey is still far. Hallelujah. I'm not saying you should go and do six to six. So, if your capacity is one o'clock, angels will clap for you. If your own is three o'clock, angels will clap for you. Are you hearing me now? But by all means, fast. Praise God. Receiving the miracle of instant healing. Scripture said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. They that wait. Hear me? There is what to wait for and there is what to violently take. There are waiting that can lead to wasting. Many a time we have claimed to be waiting on God not knowing that we have been wasting our life. Every time you say, I am Lord, I'm waiting on you. God said, me too, I'm waiting on you. The man by the pool of Bethesda claimed he was waiting, but he was wasting. That's a classic example of someone who thought he was waiting, but he was wasting. Will thou be made whole? Jesus asked him. 
And he replied, I have no man. Do you know naturally if you are waiting for men, you will waste? You will waste. Because every man is after his own. The man by the pool of Bethesda was waiting, seeking for who will help him. Seeking for who will push him. Hear me, push yourself. Tell your neighbor, push yourself. Whatever you desire to enter into in this life, push yourself. Push yourself. Like I said before, I'm sure in that 35 years, he must have studied when the turning of the water will come. If you have been used to a particular place, you will understand the environment. He must have understood the environment, but he refused to make a move. You hear me? If you don't make a move, God never moves. So your waiting can lead to wasting. Claiming that you are waiting on God while he is waiting on you is a mark of irresponsibility. Something happened to me even as a pastor in 2006. Around this time, my body will begin to feel feverish. The first thing that will strike my mind, Panadol. It continued the second day, Panadol. On the normal day, I will be okay. But when it gets into that time, the third day something happened. I knew Satan was looking for how to enter me well. Immediately got to that time. You know what I did? I just took a stroll to the church. Do you know I didn't take any fancy da? Any panador or maloxin or the zing zing zing. I didn't take anyone again. Because I needed to why didn't the thing show up in the hours of the day? So I reacted. As I reacted, the devil ran for his life. So waiting is a mark of irresponsibility. Claiming that you are waiting on God while he is waiting for you to exercise your faith. I like gentle people like me. Am I not gentle? Eh? Am I not gentle? But when it comes to blessing, no gentleman can take a blessing. Scripture say only the violent takes it by what? The devil we are dealing with is not a gentle devil. You are not dealing with a gentle devil. So stop displaying gentility when it comes to blessing. I'm not saying you shouldn't be quiet. Everybody has the capacity to be quiet. Me too, I'm quiet. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Like I've always told you, everybody you see here now has 1% madness. Everybody has it. Even the most pious person you can think about. The day is one percent madness will jack up. You will behave. I might say something to someone. When it comes to taking your right in Christ, gentility cancelled. Since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent take it. Not by dialogue. Not by consensus. Not by pleading. Force! You need force. 
The woman with the issue of blood needed force. How can you pierce through a crowd and touch someone's garment? Man, she had to muster energy. Say with me, energy. You need energy to press into a crowd. If you have lost blood for 12 years, I'm sure we can predict your outlook. We can predict your outlook. We can predict your work. We can predict your movement. Someone that have lost blood for 12 years must not have strength to pierce to a crowd. But it is in the heart. Once the heart is made up, moves will be made. Since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Ephesians 6 and verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith where we, you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Above all, faith is a quenching force. What does it mean to quench? To quench means to eliminate. To quench means to terminate. To quench means to extinct. That is, you wipe it out of existence. Hear me? Any devil tormenting your head physically, spiritually, they will be quenched in the name of Jesus. What is the guarantee that you can quench it? Number one, our total head has been paid for. The price of a good is not paid twice. It is paid once. Even if you go to the market and pay for a good in a particular shop, and you forget and come back, they cannot claim that you did not pay. Because when they were billing you, they build everything together. I might say something to someone. The price for our total heads has been paid for 2,000 years ago. So the day your understanding, Jacob, that is the day you take it. Papa was plagued with tobacco losses. Do you know what he did? Jesus, if truly you are the healer, I'm standing on your word. Heal me now. That was the end of tobacco losses. He demonstrated standing on his word. So that if he does not know the meaning, are you hearing what I'm saying, huh? He opened Mark chapter 6. I mean, Mark chapter 11. He opened it and stood on it physically. If truly your word is real, heal me now. That was the end of tuberculosis. Kenneth Hagin was on the sick bed. Long. But you know what? That scripture kept re-echoing on his spirit. Mark 11 verse 23. Let's read it. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, shall say, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That word he saith began to ring in his spirit. He saith, he saith, he saith. So a spirit man pick it, you need to say something. You need to say something. You need to say something. He now began to declare, I am healed of tuberculosis. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am healed in the name of Jesus. If you say nothing, you get nothing. What you say determine what you see. He began to say, there is power in saying. <laughs> you are saying nothing, so God has nothing to confirm. You are saying nothing, so God has nothing to act upon. What you say determine what God will do. 
He said, we do the very thing that I hear you say. Numbers 14 verse 28. I will do the very thing that I hear you say. I hear you say. I hear you say. I hear you say. God wants to hear you. The sickness needs to hear you. The sickness have not heard you. As soon as they hear of me, they shall submit themselves unto me. Nothing submits to you until you say something to it. So you have every legal right by redemption to expel and flush out every sickness. Luke 21, 15, I give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversary, sickness is an adversary, shall not be able to resist. I guess it. You can't resist it. But you must say something. If he has paid for it, you must take it now. I say you must take it now. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Another thing you must not fail to understand. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 24. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. He took, he took, he took, tell your neighbor, he took. He took, he took, he took it. He didn't take it that after dying on the cross, he said, take your thing, no, I don't finish. He himself took away. He himself did what? He didn't take it that after dying and going back, he said, I'm handing over to you, can continue. That is not the plan. Scripture says he nailed it to the cross. He took it and nailed it to the cross. It is nailed forever. I say it is nailed forever. I say it is nailed forever. He took it from you and nailed it. He nailed it. Colossians chapter 2. Let's see something there. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. The enchantment from your father's village he also nailed it to the cross. That is why we can pray, die by fire. He nailed it to the cross. So any voice crying out against you must go back. That amen is too weak. Now look at Colossians 2 verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers... He made a show of them openly. Triumphing over them in it. Your enemies must be disgraced. Because their master has been disgraced. He took. He took. Now what is nailed cannot be collected back. If you collected it back. Do you know how people collect sickness? This is my sickness. Don't start again. This is my fever. Don't come again. So you are the possessor. This is my stomach ache. Don't come again. So now you buy them, eh? How much you buy them? It's our family sickness. Every family sickness is sponsored by a family devil. 
but you must reject it. Your lineage has changed. I say your lineage has changed. Scripture says he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. We, your, new, your new kingdom, your new lineage, sickness does not survive it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? He took it away. Every time he was given a lash, something left. Jesus received 39. Say with me, 39. Now, medically, all the entire disease in the world is classified under those 39. All the, even the new one they are even discovering now is still under that 39. Papa said something. He said, if malaria mistakenly near his body, he will look from the window. If there is any unbeliever person, he will say, oh yeah, jump and go and enter that person. Quick, quick. <laughs> How will an unbeliever be walking free and you, you will be carrying sickness all about? <laughs> he said, you will just look from the window. Malaria, leave now. See that person enter. <laughs> Do you like that one? Yeah. So he paid the price for tuberculosis, for HIV. Hear me? There is no might about HIV. It's killable. Even if you made mistake, mercy will prevail for you. I'm talking to somebody. I say mercy will prevail for you. I'm not saying you should go and look for another one. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Even if they told you there is no diabetes that God cannot heal. We read a testimony of a woman who was plagued with diabetes. In the 21 day fast, she fasted. And she was praying 5 hours every day of that 21 days. Diabetes disappeared. Who told you it cannot go? Who told you it cannot go? So every sickness is curable. Because there is one that can cure it. In Luke chapter 6, is it verse 2 or there about? He said, and he healed them all. How many? So there is nothing too special about anybody's torment. Jesus, the healer, is in the house. And tonight, a healing will break out for someone. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Number three, every sickness is an oppression of the devil. Before you are afflicted, you must be oppressed. Oppression is the gateway to depression. The enemy cannot stamp it upon you until he succeeds in oppressing you. What does it mean to oppress? To pressure you to the point where you will accept. You will be pressured to the point where will you will bite. Where you will now say, now, nah, okay, I've been having malaria. I've been having malaria. I met someone, was he yesterday? He said, oh, this my headache has come again. I said, oh, this is your headache. How much did you bite? <laughs> the person started laughing. He said, this is your headache. You don't have headache. To have means to possess. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? This is my headache. Whatever you call mine is now your personal property. Sickness can never be your personal property. Sickness is an oppression of the devil. But hear me? Whatever look like an oppression requires a resistance. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. So he was coming against. I give unto you power. There is power in the word. There is power in the communion. There is power in the anointing. To come against. I give you power. Against. In Luke chapter, is it Mark chapter 6 or Mark chapter 5? Chapter 6. Scripture said Jesus gave them the oil. Power against. He called it power against. What did he call it? So every devil tormenting you, you have something against them. You have something that will work against them. You have something that will fight them. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of the darkness. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Hear me? When you possess this weapon, every devil must go down. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But for this evening, we are going to be using only the communion. Wherever the blood appears, the fullness of the presence of God appears. What led thee, O thou see that thou fled it? O Jordan, that thou was driven back. He said, Tremble thou at the presence of the Lord. Everywhere the blood appears, there is a personality that appears. Why? The life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, we are talking about the eternal life of God. The eternal life of God is the carrier of the fullness of God. Wherever God appears, sickness must disappear. Whatever is not wanted in your body, as you partake of this communion, they will leave your body. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. You are not just drinking blood. There is a personality that is announced over you. And when he is announced, Scripture says his fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge our floor. When he comes, he comes like a purifier's fire. And the fuel of soap. He said when his fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge our floor. And burn with unquenchable fire. Hear me? The physical blood has what we call the white blood cell. And the red blood cell. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The white blood cell is regarded as the policeman. It has the power to arrest every antibody. Am I correct, doctor? Now, <laughs> hear this now. Anytime the presence of God is announced in you, Jesus said, whatsoever my heavenly father has not planted, shall be what? So no oppression of sickness will survive your body. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Whatever the enemy has been using to oppress you, as you partake of this communion, they will be flushed out. Say amen like a believer. You are redeemed to be far from oppression. I say you are redeemed to be far from oppression. If you are saying amen, say better amen. There is therefore now no condemnation. To them that are in Christ Jesus. For the laws of the spirit of life. Has set me free. From the laws of sin and death. Isaiah 54 verse 14. In righteousness. Shall thou be established. Thou shalt be far. From oppression. For thou shalt not fear. And from terror. For it shall not come near thee. Thou shalt be far. From oppression. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Amen. As you partake of this communion and blood of sprinkling, oppression will be far from you. Amen. Every mysterious attacker that hides the identity to attack you in your sleep, I decree today will be their last attack. Amen. As this blood of sprinkling comes upon you, as you partake of this communion, I decree 
vengeance will go after them today. Whoever is the sponsor of the attack, by the blood of sprinkling, I decree vengeance go after them today. Say amen like a believer. But lastly, you must have to work it out. Faith comes by hearing, but it works by speaking. You must work it out. If you don't work it out, you're on your own. You must work it out. We having the same spirit of faith, we believe, therefore, we speak. We speak. I say we speak. I say we speak. I say we speak. Every time you speak, Satan must be weak. Every time you speak, the affliction go weak. And as they are going weak, they are drying up. No affliction will survive your body again. Amen. Scripture says, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So your liberty is in your mouth. Your healing is in your mouth. Your liberty is in your mouth. Your healing is in your mouth. If you don't say it, you won't take it. Rise up to your feet. You have two minutes to do this prayer in a fiery way, in a violent way. Whatever is discomforting my body, whatever is attacking my head mysteriously, the vengeance of the blood kill this affliction now what did I say kill this affliction now lift up your voice and begin to pray whatever is attacking my head whatever is oppressing my life whatever look like a mysterious attacker in my dream by this communion all oh, the blood of Jesus kill this affliction now smite the attacker now no sickness must survive my body vengeance of the blood Kill this affliction now. Whatever God has not planted. That is attacking my head. High blood pressure. Diabetes. Vengeance of the blood. I command you to die. Lift up your voice and pray. Moving objects in the body. In Jesus' name we have prayed. To partake of this communion, Jesus the healer will appear in your system in the name of Jesus. Any arrow of affliction fired by anyone against you, by the vengeance of the blood, as the affliction is leaving you, it is stamping upon the sender. Whoever is that mysterious attacker. On assignment against your life. I prophesy six hours from now. Let them have a strangers. Every evil Lord puts upon you. In your dream. By this communion. I command them to go back and lodge upon the sender. Every one of you partaking of this communion. No sickness cross with you from that gate. 
no affliction cross with you from that gate. Jesus, the healer, will strip your enemy of their powers. So shall it be. As you partake of this communion, he says his fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge our floor and burn with unquenchable fire. The sweeping Jesus will sweep your system. You are not saying amen like a believer. The sweeping Jesus will sweep through your system. If you are saying amen, say amen like a believer. The healing Jesus will sweep through your system. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Every monitoring devil. If I be sent of the God of Oyedeko to live in faith church Lafia, I pray against them. Let them be blinded. Let them be blinded. Let their come catch disaster. Before the seven days is over, let them swell up and die. So shall it be. Jesus' name we pray.